Yeah, good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful Sunday. And I'm with you here live in my home studio. I feel like praising. Praising Him, don't you? I feel like praising the Lord today. And I got so much to talk to you about, so much to give to you today. I feel like praising, praising Him. <laughs> I feel like praising, praising Him. Well, there's two times to praise Him when you feel like it and when you don't, they say. I want to hear from you today, and we're going to open up the phone lines to hear from you. Let me reset, recalibrate here. We're going to pray over the coronavirus. Run it out of your life. It has no business being around your home or around you. And more importantly, we're going to take authority over the spirit of fear, hoarding, and greed. Uh, they run together. That's why your Walmart is having a hard time stocking back up because when a pandemic comes upon a people a nation greed enters in hoarding enters in as part of the poverty spirit fear runs it fear is the major stronghold that runs it let me wait here for a minute or two while everybody comes online with us today and uh, maybe you watched on today's going to be a today is going to be what did I call it a marathon, a marathon. We're going to run a marathon here today, and we're going to stay as long as my voice will allow me. I got my cup of coffee, I got my water and everything over here. So I had a picture today this morning as I prayed, and I I really feel sorry for those who don't serve the Lord. It, it just, it makes me weep, it makes me cry, because they have nowhere to turn. Drudge Report reports that millionaires are running to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, to hide out. Fulfilling another scripture in Isaiah chapter 2, I'll give that to you a little bit later on. When the Savior reached out his hand for me. Remember that old song? Some of you have been to church, but you don't feel like you've been to church. When the Savior reached down his hand for me. Oh, this is the beauty of iPads. You barely touch it, and it's just, it's like some, some Christians are touchy. You barely touch it, and bam, the whole scene changed. Well, uh, that's the beauty of live here. So let me pray. I want to take your call today, and I want to believe God with you. And uh, I want to hear what's on your mind where you're, where you're watching. Uh, let me just uh, shift gears since that happened, and let me talk about the Drudge Report a little bit. Let me just give some headlines. Chaos. To get back in USA, that's the headline. That's the secular headline. Panic, pandemic. They say that we haven't even hit the peak yet, and that uh, the you know who are the ones that uh, hoarded up, put all that gerbil food and squirrel food in the caves. They said they're having a heyday right now. Preppers, I think they call them. And thank God we have this time a godly president who has enough sense to call for prayer. And let me just also say the things I'm going to say needs to be prefaced on this program. The things that I'm about to say are my personal opinion. I have that right. And I want to give, give you that heads up before we get further into this, as this will later uh, come on radio broadcast stations across the nation. Another brief rebroadcast you're watching live on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. And so what I'm about to say are my personal opinions, and they're not the opinions of the management or the station uh, that you're listening on. But now if you're listening on you know, YouTube or Facebook, they are my opinions. Thank God we have that. The world is going on lockdown, it says, gives a sick map. <laughs> a sick map. A sick map. 
And millionaires, billionaires, it says, are running to the caves, running to the hills, running to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Let me read you the scripture I pulled up today. I like some music as long as it just doesn't uh, go off on me. Mm. Yeah, I was singing that earlier. Isaiah chapter 2. I hope you had a good day today. And, and I want to just, I got so much thoughts in my mind, I, I got to get them all out here. The churches that canceled today, um, mm, I got mixed feelings on that. Got mixed feelings on that. We want to protect the elderly. And I understand that. But I also want to say that we should move in faith. So I want to hear what you have to say about it. We'll give the number in a minute. You can call me. Just sort of waiting for more people to come online here. So I, I really want to hear what you have to say about that because I have mixed feelings on that. Somebody says not mixed feelings until... Um, yeah, we need a few more people to come on here. We're waiting. Joanne, you're along with me for the ride. Don't know how long I'll be on live here. Uh, most of the day, I hope we can be on most of the day. I feel like crazy. You know, I saw on the rerun, go to talking about money and the viewership just drops like a rock, which is okay. It, it used to bother me, but then I realized that not everybody, you know, is supposed to be called to support me. Some... Some are looky loos and rubberneckers just want to see what David Woods is doing next. And then there are real people who um, have a heart to care for this ministry and for what we're doing. So, you know, it just separates. <laughs> the moment you say money, 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 it just separates everybody. <laughs> there they go. Money, 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 money. <laughs> it, it shows where people's heart is, really. When your heart is for God, you, it doesn't it doesn't bother you when a preacher asks you to support him. I just saw that on the rerun, and I, I took note of it. It was interesting. Isaiah chapter 2 is where I want to read. Oh, this is really good. I was reading this this morning. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. Well, there's no pr more proud people than America. Isaiah 2, 12. And upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low, the scripture says. Thank you, Lord, for those two that dropped off when I said the M word. Verse 13, but upon all the cedars of Lebanon, that's the timber industry, that are high and lifted up, and upon the oaks of Basham, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, upon every fenced wall, upon all the ships of Tarzan, that's the shipping industry, upon the pleasant pictures, Verse 17, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. I think that's what the Lord's fixing to do. Idolatry is about to come down. Down, 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 down. I want to hear your comments. Write your comments while I'm talking. This is unlike church, you know. A lot of church people have been trained all their life that your opinion doesn't count, and it does. That's birthed out of that communistic, socialistic, shepherding movement that engrafted itself within the churches today. And uh, God gave you a brain. He gave you an opinion. You can go ahead and type those comments, and I can handle it, by the way. Doing this too long. They shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and the glory of the majesty. When he rises to shake terribly the earth, uh, I, th I thought I was praying last night, late night, and I thought the last thing right now America needs is a major earthquake on top of this pandemic. You better hear what I'm praying down. You better hear what I'm praying down. And um, he also showed me um, I'll get to that in a minute. He's been showing me some things. There's my song. Love that. That's been on my heart all day. When the Savior reached down his hand for me. Verse 19 fulfills what the Drudge Report is saying today, that billionaires are flying 
to their homes in Jackson Hole, Wyoming to get away from the public. You don't have to get that far. They shall go into the holes of the rock, rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord. I've, oft, I've said it over and over and over on this program on Pray America Live in my services that until the fear of the Lord comes back to the people and, and those that did have their doors open for church today, I'm hearing jam-packed, jammed, packed out because the fear of the Lord comes. Remember 9-11? Churches were jammed. And this is what we need. So part of me says, you know, Pastor, uh, you were a coward for closing the doors to the church on Sunday. The other part of me says, Pastor, you did what was wise for the elderly. I want to hear your thoughts about that. I really would like to hear. That's, that's mixed feelings there. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, idols of, uh, which they have made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. Interesting, to the bats. Go into the clefts of the rocks and to the top of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord, for the glory of his majesty, for his... For he arises to shake terribly the earth, see she from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? That's Isaiah 2. And I found that to be very interesting in my in my prayer life today. Man has been so caught up and so proud and so haughty. And God has a way of getting our attention. And is the disease from God? No, I don't believe so. I believe the disease is straight where it's where it is, where it is. It's from the devil. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Oftentimes, the pride and the haughtiness of man lifts the hand of God or lifts the protection, and you're wide open. You're a sitting target. But not for us if you're a believer. If you love the Lord with all your heart, and if you're a believer, not so for us. And so I'd love to hear your comments about that. We'll give you the number here in a minute. There's the number. Joanne's given it today. And so if you have that, uh, call me right now. We're 888-701-4483. Hit extension 802. I'm trying to figure out which phone this is coming in on, but we'll figure it out. I want to hear your comments about that. Also, let me read some more here. The front cover of the New York Post stating, with praying hands and rubber gloves, surgical gloves, and a rosary with a cross dangling from the fingers, and big as life, heaven help us. Well, it's about time. <laughs> it's about time that the New York Post is crying out for help. Preppers have their moment. They are really, really thankful that they prepped. Mass hysteria, even churches canceled. Taco Bell uh, is closed to where you can only go through the drive through with many restaurants. Drudge Report says, if it looks like you're overreacting, you're probably doing the right thing and that the USA has not reached a peak. I wonder what the peak is. Police officers are taking some reports by phone instead of dispatching their own officers out. This fear is very powerful, very strong. When you look at the map that the Lion News Media puts out, it's hard to believe uh, who's telling what is right. But you see one state after another with deaths, in, every, in all these states, not every state, but in a lot of states. Uh, the federal government has seized fake test kits at Los Angeles Airport, LAX. I'm telling you, the, the world is wicked. The world is wicked. A woman in Italy warns, don't do anything. Stay home. They don't know where to put the bodies. And this is what, this is the kind of talk that's driving the fear. Children less sick but still spread. Newborn baby becomes world's longest, youngest victim. Oh, on and on it goes. So many other things that are said. Spain, the country that Paul the Apostle never got to, he wanted to. That was his dream, but it never happened. Imposes lockdown for entire country. 
health workers on edge of exhaustion, I can imagine. Miami Beach, where I'll be in two weeks, closes early to keep spring breakers from spreading the coronavirus. I think the mayor there has it. And then the big question, could the election be postponed for 2020 in November? This is, a, this is an interesting question. Uh, another question you could answer for me, how, how long do you think the hysteria and the hype will go for? How long will that go? I know this world is not my home. We're getting out of here, folks, real soon. Let me just take a break for a moment. You're joining me just now. You went to church, but you didn't feel like you was in church. All you could think about was who was wearing what and who was fixing to sneeze within six feet of you. Goodbye, world, goodbye. I'm getting out of here. Heaven is my home. We got a job to do. We got a mission to take care of. Don't let the thoughts overwhelm you. Take up your rightful position in Christ. Use the blood. Know who you are. This is the problem with America and the world. The reason they're so scared is because they don't know who they are. They they are condemned in their mind already. They don't know who they are. They. They get up every morning wondering who God is, who they are, and therefore they live in fear, dread, run into Jacksonville, Wyoming, trying. It's not funny. No, it's not. It's not funny. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'm gonna fly away. When we die, hallelujah, bye, bye. By the way, it's the 80-year-olds that are passing. That's the average age. And uh, it's interesting to note that those are the ones who know the word the most. Those are the, those are the prayer warriors. Those are the ones who refuse to take the mark of the beast. up in here. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Some glad morning, when this life is on, I'm going to fly away to a home. No more corona, I'm going to fly away. <laughs> I said it earlier, you might have been just joining me. You went to church, but you didn't feel like you was in church. You heard three points and a poem, shoved a dollar in the basket, and ran to the Cracker Barrel. And that's not church. Mm-mm. Turn me loose, Jesus. Turn me loose! <laughs> I feel like I got a Holy Ghost blowtorch in my hand and I'm ready to give hell trouble. Wait a minute, I gotta, I gotta do that all over again. I just can't help it. I, my feet are going and now I feel like I'm having church. I feel like I'm having, you feel like you're having church now. Remember when, remember when you stayed? Come and dine, baby, come and dine, the master calleth. Jesus fed them a 
multitude, and I guarantee you he didn't do it with a mask on. Jesus fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. Come and dine, the master called Come and dine. Do you remember it? Hallelujah. I'm going to shout when death is all around. When the world has gone to hell in a handbasket, we're going to shout anyway. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Are you redeemed? Dine, the master calleth, come and dine. I'll eat fish on the shore with Jesus anytime. All the time. Jesus fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. He's still doing it today. He's still doing it. Jesus healed all those with all manner of sickness, even raised the dead and healed those that were maimed. You don't hear about that anymore. It's fables. To some churches, it's fables. I don't believe it's fables. I believe it's the real deal, honey, and it's still the church of God that rolls on to this day just like it was in the upper room the day of, the, day of the book of Acts. There's been no changes from then to now. Come and dine, the master call him, come and dine. All the time, Jesus fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. Come on, let's, let's have supper today. Let's feast on the word. Let's talk about the word. Let's talk about Jesus, hallelujah. All the time, I'm at Jesus' table. I'm, on, I'm not at Dredge's table. I'm at Jesus' table. I'm not at CNN table. Bunch of broods and vipers and snakes. I'm at Jesus' table, where he prepares a table before for me in the presence of my enemies. You're at that table. We're at the table together. <laughs> oh, Thank you, Jesus. Mmm, shouting happy. That's camp meeting music there, you know. Well, I've been delivered, and I've been changed. And you can listen to the naysayers, you can listen to the gossipers if you want to, but thank God for his deliverance. Thank God for his change in my life. Has he changed you? Has he delivered you? Has he done what no other person can do for you? All right, let me hear from you today. You've got the number there, and many of you have joined me now. You had church, but you didn't feel like you was in church. You're in church now, buddy. I guarantee you that. Eight 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 seven zero one four four eight three. I want to hear what's on your mind today. I want to take your call. Pray with you. So many have tuned us in. Literally hundreds of people have tuned us in, whether it's on a rebroadcast or on this live edition right now. I know you've got things on your mind. I want to hear about it today. Hear what you have to say. Good to see you, Eric. Eric, did you have church today in Henderson, Kentucky? I don't know if you did or not. I'd love to hear from a pastor. Maybe maybe you had church today. I'd love to hear why you had church. If you didn't have church, I'd love to hear why you didn't. Right now, I'm sort of neutral. Because I'm a faith man. But I'm also a wise man. And a faith man says, let's have church. A, a man of wisdom. <laughs> Eric, I speculated you did. <laughs> Which phone am I at? I feel like Daffy Duck with these phones. Yes, all right. Okay, Joanne. I think this is Joanne. I wish I had my call monitor, right? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yes, Joanne. Did you did you have church or did you go to church online today? Well, I'm kind of a curious situation, but yeah, my husband works for a shift. Oh. So it wasn't anything different from our normal. 
Yes, yes, yes. So I'm I got it. Do what we normally do. So even the grocery, you know, I just, I, and I tell on myself, it's kind of funny. I, I had a great time at the grocery. I was laughing with people, uh, talking to them, witnessing to them. It was just like a business. Everyone was just peaceful, you know. I just went, I, 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 I'm done telling myself a little more. I sat in the parking lot for two hours and prayed for people as they went by and you know, I thought I was going to have to help one person find their vehicle, but they, they finally found it. Thank God for Clippers. And uh, I just had worship music. Um, I think you were had a, a live broadcast on, so I pulled that up and had that playing called the tail end of that, and then had gospel music. I just sat and I played in the parking lot, and I changed the atmosphere. Then I went in the store. I took the atmosphere of heaven with me into the grocery store, and it was just people were smiling and laughing at just. You know, you wouldn't know anything was wrong, you know? Right, right. Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. I like that. Well, I think I smile with people's face. And, and I just normally give them all these. So then I got the checkout line. And I, I'm really bad about this. I, I, go, I go about once a month to the grocery store. So when I go, it's a buggy full. But I guess I just I don't like grocery shopping. <laughs> so I try to just stop this about a month. So I was just doing my normal routine what I would normally do. And I got to looking, and uh, the conveyor belt was full. I had a few things left, and the person behind me started smiling. And I had looked up. I said, no, I always do this. This is what I normally do. And he just started another conversation. And he started talking about his dad, who was a pastor, and the people around us are here and was talking about the Lord. And it's so just the whole time. That's, I think, the response of God's people. We should just keep fervent in what God's called us yeah. to do. Yeah. God's called me to be a housewife right now, so I do it fervently the best that I can and to assist you the best that I can. You know, what God's called me to do, I'm just going to keep doing what God's called me to do. So, right. So, yeah, we watch, we watch church online, but that's what we do every weekend because he works churches right. and he's older. He just likes to rest on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I want him to rest. And so we... We just keep getting through sure heaven in our home and every way that we can reach out to other people, any outlet that's available to us. I think everyone should light up social media with prayer and praise and worship. I think it'd just be wonderful. Joanne, I believe that this is going to turn the tide. It's going to cause uh, social life to make a turn. And we're making that the whole world is making the turn now. Uh, they said 96% of Europe does not work from home, but they're they're making the shift. And everything's about to change in 2020. We prophesied it in 2019. And it's we're seeing the shift. We're seeing the change come where everything is, is, is changing. The whole world is changing. And people that are looking on are saying, well, it's for the good. But also, I think that some of it is staged by... Uh, government. I believe that there are some things that are being placed in position with this uh, fear factor uh, for the paving the way of the Antichrist. I, I want to talk about that a little bit today. I don't study losers, but I would like to, uh, in a few minutes here, give all of the signs that you can look for of the Antichrist. Now that we have Facebook, it's free. Uh, I mean, if uh, Lord showed me Bernie Sanders will not get in. In fact, I don't know, even know that he'll live beyond the election. Uh, I got yeah. something from the Lord on that. I don't even believe, I believe that uh, perhaps he will be taken out by the Lord. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if that's before the election or after, but uh, but uh, socialism and is a glorified word for communism. Communism is not the way for that America wants to go, but but the Antichrist will come on the scene and your freedom to minister to people in the parking lot of Walmart, my freedom to come on Facebook, minister to people, our freedoms, uh, we'll, we'll see it. We, we have it right now, so we might as well use it. It's important that we, we take advantage of a beautiful opportunity as, as horrible as it is, yet it's a beautiful opportunity for, for us to give hope to people can you imagine, Joanne, what it must be like for the little mother waiting on a table, 
trying to support her two children, w trying to live life without God, and people uh -huh. all over threatened and actually living in fear. I mean, you and I, we're born again, but we don't have the, the threat of fear because we know we're covered by the blood. But how many millions of people don't have that promise? They don't have that hope. They don't have that comfort in their heart knowing that everything is going to be okay. It's up to us to tell uh -huh. them. It's us up to up to us to tell them how to get in, themselves in a position to get right with the Lord and get under the blood covering. Some of them went to Sunday school. Some of them's been to VBS as children, and now they're trying to live life on their own, trying to do it all by themselves. This is the moment. This is the time. That, tell them you better get under the shadow of the Almighty. I, it could be that simple, Joanne. It could be that simple to tell people, strangers, you better get under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Are you, are you there? Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. I, you're oh. never at a loss of words. I, I, yeah, I know. I, I try to, I try to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just think on that for a moment. I want to say a few more things here. Oh, oh, I do have a response to that. All right, go ahead. As, as, as you were speaking, and I believe what the Lord, and I also have a prayer request for someone. Um, in a second, but I believe now more than ever is the time for covenant partnership. A lot of people don't understand the power of covenant, don't understand it. We live in a, under a new, see, the New Testament, the new covenant, it's not for everybody. It's only for believers of Jesus Christ. And so I had a question for the Lord today, kind of came to me, is it possible that people who not receive Gifts of salvation, they're still living under the old covenant, the Mosaic law. And that's full of curses and judgment. Mm -hmm. They can never, that's why they're wanting to do these sacrifices. They're still under that uh, Mosaic system um, that's full of uh, curses if you don't obey God. And we all fall short. That's why we all need Jesus. He fulfilled the old covenant for us because we couldn't do it. It was beyond our human capacity. And he did it for us. So now, for those who receive the gift that Jesus has given us, sealed it with his blood, we have a blood covenant with Jesus. And for those who receive it and believe, you receive it by believing. Mm -hmm. People believe in your heart. Yeah. And, and the Lord showed you a lot of people have gotten away from the simplicity. You believe in your heart. You can you can sing. You can pray. So it, you have to believe in your heart. If you want to see it be effective in your life, you have to believe in your heart. So you say, well, how do I believe? Well, you have to have faith. Yes. Have faith. It's real simple. Faith That's comes right. by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. There's all kinds of things available to us where we can listen to the Bible. There's uh, preachers that have a, you know, listen to David Woods, you know, get in there, listen to his videos. You'll get good grounding and good ministry about that. So, well, Joanne, let me jump in here and say this to you. I've yeah. said this before. And uh, I, it needs to be said again right here. There's two orders. There's the order of um, the order of Melchizedek, and and that's those that are under the new covenant with communion. Melchizedek, the high priest, Abraham came running back from war with the spoils of war under his arms, and he met the high priest for covenant. And we know Mel Melchizedek is the type and shadow of Jesus. And then there's the order of Caiaphas, and Caiaphas is that old order, that religious Mosaic uh, covenant. He bought his way into the priesthood. He he goes through the motions. He doesn't really care about the people just as long as, uh, you know, the priesthood is in order the way he thinks it is. He's the one that threw Jesus in the dungeon of his home and uh, brought him in false accusation, brought Jesus to Pilate, remember? Pilate washed his hands of it. And so that's an order. That's an order that's in the order of Caiaphas is directly in contradiction to the order of Melchizedek. We're into the order of Melchizedek. Those that are redeemed, and I don't mean to make it sound complicated because it's not, it's simplified, but we're redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And uh, Caiaphas uses words like atonement, always working their way to be at one with God. But when you get under the order of Melchizedek, you've been redeemed through communion with the Lord, and I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
And when you're redeemed by the blood of the lamb, now you're at a place where you uh, you don't have to work for your salvation, lest any man should boast. You don't have to fulfill all those sacrifices and do all that uh, labor, laborious stuff to, to get with God. You you come to him on faith. I mean, yes, we still work. We still work in the vineyard. The whole world's a vineyard, but we're not working to get in with God. We're in on that covenant with God. God and Jesus are in on a covenant, and mankind gets to be on in on that covenant. If we accept it by faith, if we get in. And we roll with the yes. Lord. So I wanted to add that to what you said just a minute ago. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I just glanced down at the comments, and this goes right along with what we're saying. Um, if I could slightly switch gears, I want to talk about covenant, but I add just a little personal testimony in with it. My husband and I were up against the wall. We couldn't get a breakthrough. Um, what, 20 years? No, 10, 10, 15 years. We just would get to a certain point mm-hmm. push back, no matter how hard we fast. I don't know how many 40 day fasts I went on. I lost count. Mm. Went on so many. Um, and, you know, I'll do prayer, prayer, prayer and fasting, <laughs> you know. And the Lord would show me we would get little, we would gain spiritual territory, but we were not getting the advances that we wanted to see. And, Dave, I'm going to brag on you a minute, but a part of this is the, everyone, God puts gifts and callings and anointings on everyone. Yes, He, he does. People ministry. And he has put a specific anointing upon your life. Mm-hmm. And it was the type of anointing that David, that Jim and I needed operating in our life, in our home, in our marriage. Mm-hmm. It was not till we linked in partnership, covenant partnership, mm-hmm. is your ministry, this ministry that God's given you, that we got that. Finally, mm-hmm. I, 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 when I think about it, I want to clap to the floor. I can't imagine how I fought. How I prayed, mm-hmm. how I quoted scripture, how I pled the blood of Jesus, mm-hmm. how I expanded angels to surround us, and and I was I, I hate to say this publicly. There were times we we loved each other, and we were we're in a we're in a marriage covenant. That's for life. Mm-hmm. Covenant for life. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And so we were determined. We're going to keep this. Whatever we have to do. Sometimes I just have to go. I said, "Honey, do what you need to do. I'm going to be for the car in the driveway." And I just sit in my car and pray. Yeah. There, there were there were nights like that. Mm. I've never said that publicly because love covers a multitude of sin. Love always protects. Right. I'm not here to air our dirty laundry. But I just want to give this person an idea. It, it was it was real bad at times. And and I prayed and I prayed. I said, God, you've got to do something. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. And I, I was sitting at my kitchen table. I said, raise up a man on the radio who will pray with people live on the radio. Wait a minute now. You're in Lexington, Kentucky, in the suburbs of Lexington, and you prayed, raise up a man on the radio live in the middle of the night. And because y'all, y'all, night, y'all, are, y'all are nighttime shift people. I mean, you're, that's when your job yeah. has to be. Right? And I, at that time, was in Las Vegas, Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Yes. So you made that prayer. What happened? I believe he, like the widow woman, he hears the cry of our heart. And the, at that point, my, the cry of my heart was very desperate. And I was, you know, saying and saying, believing. Mm-hmm. had a word from the Lord. I said, it will happen one day. I don't know how many days, how many weeks, how many years. But one day it will happen because I have a word. I'm going to say another word. I said, God, I need help. I need help. But, we, you know, we went to church after church after church. We couldn't find someone with a strong enough anointing on their life to believe in power because I'm not going to accept this. God God wants us to live above this. It was not till we went with your ministry. Mm. We got the breakthrough. Wow. That's when we got the breakthrough. When we linked with your ministry because that's the anointing that God put on your life. But I also gotta say this, David, and I know it's true. You cultivate that anointing. Yes. You live in such a way that that anointing can flow at any time. Yes. You don't watch things that are ungodly. Yes. You don't think thoughts that are ungodly. They That's come right. in, you cast them down. Yes. I mean, you walk in the mind of Christ. Amen. You walk in the diligence that's required to have that anointing flowing in your life. Amen. So when our faith came together, that, that thing, I believe it was a but. And finally, when we partnered, it, God drove it out. Yes. God drove it out. Yeah. That's the power of covenant partnership. Yeah. I've seen things. 
shatter from off of you and Jim almost in an instant, almost in a day, almost in a few days, some things, and just totally, yeah. the Lord just swept in and just lifted y'all to a higher level in God, a higher level in your thinking, yeah. a bigger thinking concerning your own home life, about your finances, everything just shifted up a new level. And it was through that partnership where you linked with, with uh, a higher level of faith. And uh, yeah. I, I witnessed that with you all, and that was exciting to see what the Lord did. Powerful stuff. Well, and we, did, we didn't know, and we haven't even found out until recently, that there were some other things going on um, with relatives. And that, I'm trying to say it, but as loving as I can say it, demons were, were, were um, working through those avenues. And, but we didn't know. We didn't know. And so, as God began to reveal these things, but you know, why did we get the revelation on those? Because we partnered, and you pray for your, uh, you pray for our partners. I mm -hmm. pray for our partners mm -hmm. to become a part of this ministry. How that happened, God is amazing, yeah. awesome. And um, but it was when it's a covenant partnership. It sure we is. We have to just say, hey, yeah. it's right. We have to link arms. So mm -hmm. That's what the body of Christ is. That's right. I hope that blesses. Yes, I'm looking at Tammy. I know you, Tammy, and you're from Iowa. I want to just minister to her for just a moment, and I want to say to you, Tammy, that your the struggles that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places, and and you need people that will link with you, not religious people. You need people that know how to move out in faith and how to bind and how to loose and and I'm going to do that with you and that's the beauty of Facebook, it's the beauty of YouTube and Periscope and all these platforms and me coming, I can link with my faith with you and then not only is it me but my goodness people here like Joanne in Lexington Kentucky and, and others around, uh, I'm thinking of some in Georgia and I'm thinking of some in Florida and Texas and and they come on here and they watch and they come in agreement too. I like to say it like this, that this is probably one of the longest prayer altars, prayer benches around the world as we come together in prayer. So Joanne, I wish you would take a moment and pray for Tammy. I think you've seen her comments and she's still watching. And then I want to jump in and pray. And those of you watching right now, we can pray for Tammy. That's what this is about. And Tammy has a beautiful family living in Iowa. Let, let's do that right now. Yes, and I also have a, a, a friend who her leg is swollen, and I watched my husband's swollen leg go down 50%, and one day by the, the next morning it was gone. And I told her that we're believing in prayer for her as well. Mm -hmm. Great feeling. So I'm like, oh, if it's okay, I'd like to... Please, step out there in prayer. Yes, okay. Um, it's just a name. I get hyper, and I'm not doing Tammy. Um, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just lift Tammy to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the Holy Spirit would flow into her life, flow into her family, fill her home with the angels of God and drive out every demon away from them. In the name of Jesus, fill them with your peace, fill them with your love, fill them with your hope, fill them with faith. I pray that the Word of God would become alive and active in their life. The words that they put in themselves, that they read, that they showed, that would have spring up into life now. I call it for the command to spring forth. Yes, yes, in life. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, spring up. He put the prayer time in. But, and we agree our faith. We link our faith with our with her faith right now. In the name of Jesus, we command these things to spring forth. Any witchcraft that might be coming against them, we curse it at the root. We command it to die in the name of Jesus. And we pray that those that are practicing such things, that God, you show them the error of their ways, and we speak that they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray the peace of God and the Holy Ghost fill her home right now, in the name of Jesus, there it is, honey, it's flowing in right now. Yes. Jesus, fill her, fill her with your peace, surround her with your angels, comfort her with your Holy Spirit, strengthen her faith, give her strength in her body, and strengthen her spirit, strengthen her emotions, peace in her mind, let her know that Yes, Lord. This ADHD condition. We seek healing for this mind. 
Come on. That's right. Brand new. In the name of Jesus. I'm yes. Mine. In Jesus' name, the mind of Christ over this uh, child. In the name of Jesus right now. Heal this mind. He's a sound son. In the name of Jesus. And for the anger that's going on, we come against feelings of helplessness and feelings of despair that are being expressed through anger. And just show this. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. just steps, steps down from Microsoft. I don't, I don't know if that's, that's true or not. Uh, Midtown, I do know that this is right. Midtown Manhattan and his banks are completely out of $100 bills. Uh, the Seattle airport is opening its airport up to the homeless. Uh, this, this is really something what's going on here, Joanne. 368 dead in one day in, in, in the nation of Italy. In one day. 368 people dead in Italy today. Of course, what it's doing is it's lighting the fuse to mass hysteria, even the churches are canceling. Ball brawls are breaking out of stores across the country as people are wiping off the shelves. And now Ohio and Illinois both are ordering all restaurants, bars to close. Completely. I know here in Washington State, just the drive throughs are open. It's a real mess, and I, I sense in my spirit this is a manufactured uh, disease uh, through communism meant to attack our election. And so far, I think it's working. But the Lord's going to have his, his say on the whole thing, and nothing knocks God off his throne. Nothing. I see the comments, uh, James. Yes, I believe that. That the Lord is, the uh, prophet was prophesied that Washington State would have a huge move of God. Bigger than the Jesus movement. This could do it. This could tip the scales in that direction. It's all about the fear of God. And it's all about the fear of God. When, the, when a nation starts fearing God, that's when the massive revival happens. I was looking over my bookshelves here, Joanne. I don't think there's one book that prophesied about a pandemic. There's been pandemics, that means worldwide disease. There's been pandemics before where they piled the bodies up and the move of God happened. I know that one preacher uh, went to Africa took the bubonic plague, threw it under a microscope and prayed and watched it to die in front of his eyes and the scientists were astonished. And, and so th this is the power of God that we have, but this is the finest hour for anointed men and women to rise. All those that are just playing games, uh, you might as well just go do something else. 
But, but for, for those, those with an anointing on their life, this is the time to arise up. Arise up and pray and seize the day. This is the time. So I believe that, James. Uh, you know, sis, I want to... I want, I want to share, share with you, James, James I, think I think you're okay with this, but James is a miracle. James is a walking miracle. He has a, he lives with a bullet in his hand, I mean, in his heart. But it is so lodged in his heart in a position that the doctors can't give it, get it out. So he lives with it there. He loves the Lord. And he's a walking miracle. Every day is a gift from the Lord to him. What, what a testimony. Yes. And uh, there's no, no doubt in my mind he, he keeps the fear of the Lord, no doubt about that. Dallas, good to see you from Atlanta, Georgia. Tammy, we're going to continue praying, and I just, I just see that the Lord is going to make some changes, and a shift is coming, and you've stood in faith, you've prayed, you've, you've anointed your place with oil. And you've, and you've done, done what you know and what to do. And the, I hear the word of the Lord say, after you've done all that you know what to do, stand. Stand therefore. And the Lord says, patience is a weapon that forces deception to reveal us. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Patience is a weapon that's forcing deceptions to reveal themselves to you. And you're going to see some deceptions come to the light. As you're patient with the Lord. Hey! Man, I felt that just now. That's your word. Be patient and wait upon the Lord. And in waiting on the Lord, the deceptions are going to come to the light. And you'll know exactly what to do. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now. Every person listening to the sound of my voice. I take authority over fear. I rebuke fear from off this nation. I rebuke fear from off my brother and off my sister. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Oh God, may this nation, may the whole world run to God in repentance in Jesus' name. As the pandemic stretches across the globe, one report is saying Italy buries 386 people in one day. My, my. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. And I sing glory, glory, glory to his name forever. Glory. Glory, glory to his name. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Maybe you're saying, how can you sing at such a time as this? That's what you do. You praise the Lord when you're facing a crisis. I sing glory, glory. Glory, glory to his name forever. Glory, glory, glory to his name. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Come on, can you sing it? I sing glory, glory, glory to his name forever. Glory, glory, glory to his name. I'm glad we didn't have a president that canceled the National Day of Prayer. I'm glad we have a president that had the wisdom. He may not have the mor morality of the past in his life with God. I think the Lord's done a great change in his life, and who are we to judge him? But to know that God's done a great work in his life and given us a president who 
has the fear of God. Fear enough to call a day of prayer on a Sunday. Not an hour to sneak in, sneak out, sing three points in a poem, hurry up. <laughs> Run to the restaurant that's open. Mm -mm. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to worship the Lord. And I don't know about you, but Joanna, I'm on the glory land way. I'm on the glory land way. And we're, we're headed for a home that's eternal, Joanne. We're headed for a home uh, that is not of this world, where there's no more sickness, no more dying, no more suffering. That's where we're headed. But we can have a little bit of that from heaven on us now, in our hearts now, on, in our lives right now. Amen. Yes, amen. You know, Dave, I was just sitting here thinking, you see people raising the dead in a minute. Say it again. Do we have to say it? Say it again. People. You've seen people raised from the dead. Oh, yeah. Ministry. That's right. That's where it is that they raised for a What is there to be afraid of? No. But if we should step over, we believe that we live in divine hell. Yeah. All the days of our life, 120 years. But should we step over, we're stepping into heaven for those who are believers in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Make him the Lord of their life. We are stepping into heaven. What is this a fear? The only one to be afraid of is God, to have a healthy fear of the Lord. And that's where that's actually where the nation is going, Joanne. That's where I mean, I, I believe we're gonna see some of the hardest hearts in the world with the fear of the Lord coming to God. I really truly sincerely believe that that's fixing to happen. And, um, that, well, we, we as believers have to be uh, the first ones. God doesn't put this disease out there to put it upon people. This d disease is not birthed in the heart of God. God says none of these diseases. And we, we must plead the blood. Even churches stop talking about the blood. Even churches stop singing about the blood. I don't mean to be critical, but I want to tell the truth. And we must get back to the blood of the Lamb and understand what that blood covenant does for us and how to plead the blood. Uh, some people on my Facebook, some people on my Facebook are just now learning. They didn't even, they've been going to church for several years and didn't even know nobody took the time to teach them that they can take a little bottle of oil and put that video, <laughs> well over a thousand people have shared that now and it's going all over the world how to take a little bottle of oil and and put it above your the doorpost of your home and to, to to take a little bit and put it on your forehead and plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. And, and if we'll start pleading the blood, I think we're going to see quite a bit uh, difference take place in the hearts of humanity. Those who plead the blood will see victory. That's for sure. When I see the blood. Yeah, let's do it. Come on. You you lead the way that I'm going to jump in. Come on. Let's agree together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over our families, over our homes, over our partners, those that are in covenant partnership with us. We plead the blood of yes. Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. We release the covenant, the blood covenant of Jesus Christ upon their lives, upon their homes, upon their families. Not just to protect them from coronavirus, but to protect them from every disease, to protect them from every sickness, to have divine health flowing in their life, to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the gifts and the ministries of God flowing in their lives right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over their mind, over their body, their Come on. will, the emotion, That's right. spirit, soul, the body, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yes, Lord. And we resist every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every sin. Everything that falls under the curse of the law, we resist it steadfast 
not in our own might, not in our own strength, but by the Spirit of the Lord, we resist it with the blood of the Lamb, with the blood of Jesus. We command every sickness, every disease, every fear, every fear has to go. I come against that fear. I break it from off of your mind. I break every, I cancel every strategy of hell that would try to come against you in the name of Jesus. Loose it, loose it, loose it. Go now for my brother. Go now for my sister. In the name of Jesus, release your hold. Release your stronghold off my brother, off my sister's mind. Let the thoughts of heaven come down upon us, O God, that we're covered by the blood, covered by the blood of Jesus. We are in communion. We are in a union with Jesus, a union with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In the city where the Lamb is the light, <laughs> oh yes, your sins are washed away. Forgiveness has come. The blood of Jesus is your rescuer. Oh, we thank God for the blood. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over nations. We plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. We plead the blood of Jesus over states from Washington to Florida, from New York to California. We plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Right now, we pull the bite from this disease. We pull it now in Jesus' name. God, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We resist the devil. He has to flee. He has to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We resist it steadfast. Our seed is in the ground. It multiplies. It multiplies. Thank you, Father, for the protection that we have in the blood, the blood of Jesus. Woo! Oh, yeah, Joanne, I feel that right now. I feel the Lord doing that in our lives. Hallelujah. Even across this nation, I feel the Lord is doing something right now that is different. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What are you feeling, Joanne? What are you feeling? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, a mighty wind blew in uh, the house here. Praise God. Hi. Hallelujah. Wow, the, the wind of the Holy Ghost, it, it blew and it came out of my mouth. And uh, something has broken in the atmosphere over this nation. Something just broke. Yeah, 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 yeah. I plead the blood of Jesus over yeah. Joanne and Jim. I plead the blood of Jesus over Doretha and her husband, oh God, Pastor. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus over Pastor Wayne Parks. I plead the blood of Jesus over Shelly. I believe I plead the blood of Jesus right now over Tammy. I believe, oh, they're coming on as fast as they can, I can read them. I plead the blood of Jesus over Cody, over Letha and her husband. Oh, Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over Carolyn. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over Bob and Jake. I plead the blood of Jesus over Josie and Eric and all those that continue to come online here i plead the blood i plead the blood of jesus we don't look to corona we don't look to the government we don't look to the hospital we don't look to the physicians we look to the great physician turn our eyes upon jesus oh we thank you father hallelujah oh death where's your victory oh grave where's your sting america belongs to god the united states belongs to jesus and the people as they humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. Oh, Jesus, return your people. Cause your people to return to you, oh God. Let every church be filled. Let every church be filled, oh God. Let it be filled with hungry hearts, with people that fear the Lord, that fear the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Not at CNN, not at the bad news. And the things of this earth, coronavirus, shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Joanne, I sense a warfare going on across over the heavenlies, over America right now. I see in the spirit 
angels of God fighting, even Michael himself, fighting, warring, warring, demons of oppression, demons of poverty, demon spirits of sickness. I see that happening across America. Wait a minute, I see, I see the warfare over Texas. I see the warfare over Florida and New York and even California. There comes angels right now to the coast of California. The coast of California is being protected. Ha, ha, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You foul devil, you get your hands off this nation. You get your hands off the people of this nation. You loose your hands off the hold of the minds of politicians. You get your hands off of people right now in the name of Jesus. Joanne, I seen something launched at the coastal area of California. And the angels of the Lord blocked it. Mighty God, can I say anymore, Lord? Am I allowed to say it? What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? You're going to be asked of the Lord one day. He's asking you now. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's my healer. That's what I think about him. He's my deliverer. That's what I think about him. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> oh, I know I can't sing like some of y'all can, but at least I sing it as under the Lord. Don't let fear grip your heart. I gotta obey the Lord. Beautiful thing about Facebook is we don't have anybody pulling the plug at a certain time. We can just go on. What do you think about Jesus? That's the question. He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He's all right. You better accept him. You better make Jesus the Lord of your life, not just playing. You went to church today, but you didn't feel like you had church. You stayed your distance six feet, wore rubber gloves and a mask, and headed to the barbecue afterwards. I, I don't mean to be skeptical. I don't mean to be negative, but until we have the fear of the Lord, honey, ain't nothing happening good. You're going to have to realize you got to change your thinking towards God and towards the things of God. And you got to get a fear of the Lord like you never had before. A hundred percent of the things you do that are offensive to God, that you know that they're offensive to God, wouldn't happen if you had the fear of the Lord. You'd be like that constantly. Fear of God. Do you understand you're living under the hour and the time of grace? You are, you're living under the hour of grace. This is a dispensational period. Hasn't always been like this. There is coming a time when Jesus comes back, he's gonna ride a white horse. I ask the Lord, Lord, please don't let me ride no jackass. I don't wanna be on no donkey. I don't wanna be on no <laughs> Shetland pony. Give me something Kentucky fast. I read, then I went back and read it. Uh, what am I going to be riding? I'm going to be riding right behind the Lord. Certainly he won't put me on no Shetland pony. And it says in the scriptures in Revelation that we're going to ride a white horse right along with him. So we're going, we're going Kentucky fast. We're going lightning fast with the Lord. We're coming back with him. And you must understand that the fear of the Lord, when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back as the passive Jesus who died on the cross that you grew up seeing in Sunday school this time. He's coming with fire in his eyes and a sword in his mouth and a chain in his hand. And he's coming to bind up the evil one for a thousand years. 
And he's going to take over, and there's fierceness, there's judgment, there's wrath. And there's two sides of God. There's grace and there's wrath. And nobody wants to talk about the wrath of God. It's too, too, too fear. But if you, while you're going to the dollar store, you should be thinking not just about the grace of God, but also the wrath of God. You should also be thinking about both sides of God. And if you'll keep that in your spirit, it's not like God's trying to kill you. I'm not, he's for you, not against you. Don't go that direction. <laughs> it's just religious people. They just, I heard that in my spirit. Somebody going way off the other direction. God's not trying to kill you. God, God loves you. God is love. Let's not think like the other false religions. God is love. The scripture says so in the book of John. But I want to read this to you today. Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place, that's where we are right now. This little room right here is for years, 14 years I've lived in this house, 15 years, and this room with special doors, double doors, a window, this is built, I built my home with a secret place. And I, the Lord told me three years ago, turn it into a studio so that you can minister to people. Well, I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to travel so much. And the Lord is so good. He, he knows everything. He does all things well. Oh, uh, when you get into the secret place, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you're gonna to have to say it, not think it. He is my refuge and my fortress. Say it. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. That's what this is. It's a pest and it's noisy. Actually, pestilence in the translation here means a blood eater. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Thou shalt not be afraid, thou shalt not be afraid, thou shalt not be afraid, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at thy side. That's what happened in Italy. They buried 386 people in Italy today, one day, in one day. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come Nighty, I gotta take a praise break right there. I'm walking up the King's Highway. It's a highway to heaven. Nothing can walk up there but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. Walking up the King's this is Bible now. Get a hold of this. I don't know if your preacher talks about this. I hope he does. That's what they say in the South, my preacher. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Do you know that this disease is for the rebellious. It's for the wicked. It is not for the believer. It's not for the Christian. It's not for the one that's in covenant. One scripture says in Proverbs says, if you're not fearing God, you should be very afraid. If you're not walking with God, yes, go ahead, be fearful. That's what's happening. That's why you're seeing the shelves wiped out at Walmart. That's why you're seeing everything from toilet paper to beans gone. Today, Dredge Reports announces stores are keeping, having a hard time. I don't have to read it exactly. They have a hard time restocking the shelves. It shall not come nigh you. That's Psalms 91, 7. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Are you watching it? Are you watching it? Only with your eyes. In other words, you're not going to participate in it. It's not coming near you. You're covered by the blood. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. No plague comes nigh your dwelling. No plague comes nigh your dwelling. Do you get it? Do you get it yet? No plague. Say that. No plague comes nigh my dwelling. Woo! For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under the feet, because he has set his love upon me. The Christians that don't know their authority and don't know who they are in Christ will not understand this. You've got to know who you are in Christ in order to trample under your feet. Tread upon the lion and the adder, a young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under. You've got to know who you are in Christ or you won't be able to do that. You'll sit under the bed and shake like a leaf in the wind. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Say that out loud, God's love is on me. Not his wrath, his love is upon me. So he says he'll deliver me. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Now you better get to knowing his name. You better get to know it, that's the first thing. If you're locked away in, home, in your home, that's the first thing you should be doing. Looking up the names of Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Come on. All the names of Jesus, you need to get to know the name. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's Psalms 91. We're going to read it today. If you haven't already, I read it earlier and I've read it again and I'm going to read it again over my children. And I want you to read this over your family today. Oh, Joanne, I feel the Spirit of the Lord touching people. Yes, yeah, someone's getting healed. Someone's getting healed right now. That healing is flowing, it's flowing in their body, and, and they're wondering what it is. Is this the healing of the Holy Spirit? They, they have so many feelings in their body. They're fearful. They're like, what is this? Is this going to hurt me, or is this going to help me? They're not sure. What you're feeling right now, you're feeling a warmth, a heat, the Holy Spirit, the healing flowing into your body. He is making you whole. Yes. Now. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name. Now, Joanne, James has a. It has an interesting question. Does Italy have an open rebellion to the Bible, or is there any reason this disease is hitting Italy harder? Well, I'm going to say it, and I'm probably going to make some people upset, but Italy is bound up with idolatry like no one's business. Rome is in Italy. The Catholic Church is in Italy. And uh, when you're talking to Catholic Church, you're talking about major, major strongholds of idolatry. I, I I just learned yesterday that the UK now has been closed for traveling in and out of the United States. The UK is in a serious predicament because uh, they have even banned, I don't know if this is true now or if this is old news, but at one point they banned Morris Sorello from even holding a crusade in the UK uh, because of his claims of the power of God raising people from the dead. And so UK's got a big problem now on their hands because they've made some stupid, foolish decisions against God and God's anointed. It would not surprise me if uh, if London was right behind Italy. But here you see a here you see an epicenter of of the world's most powerful religious place, Rome. Of course, the most death didn't happen in Rome, but. This should be the place where the power of God falls and people be healed instead. 386 death burials in one day. And so just because you're religious doesn't give you a free pass. You gotta make sure you're covered by the blood and you're in relationship. You're, you're focusing on the name of Jesus. This is a good thought, James, and I appreciate you bringing this up. And I know it'll probably get some people upset. That's okay. The, the gospel does that to people and it's a sword of the spirit, and it cuts both ways. Jo Joanne, you want to add your thoughts there? Joanne's on the phone from Lexington, Kentucky. Yes, yes, my thoughts, it's just someone, um, God showed me today that 
that a lot of times that you and I are so familiar with, a lot of people don't know what, what that is or what that means. And I think there's some that are wondering, what is an idol? You know, they might think of something they've seen on TV or different things. Um, or we could spend the whole day talking about that, but I don't want to focus on um, the devil's kingdom, but I want to focus on God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. But my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is an idol is something, anything that a person in their heart takes is more important on than Jesus Christ. Than yes. God, or they're taking their trust in, the, in, in something of this dimension uh, for whatever, for the next slide, or there's just all kinds of things out there. Um, instead of placing their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ, and he lives in the eternal dimension. So when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we're receiving from the eternal dimension. He's first in our lives. But that also means, as this covenant with him, mm-hmm. when God whispers to us to do something, he to obey his voice and just do it. It's that simple. To me, that's my understanding. I know you can add to it. You're, you're, you're so much more, you've got so much more education than I do, David, and, and so much more experience than knowledge and wisdom, but my understanding is anything that we make more important than God, it's anything, it can be any, literally anything. Yes, and let me just say that you don't have to go through Mary. This is idolatry. You don't go through Mary to get to Jesus. You go, you go straight to Jesus to get to the Father. And that's what the Bible says. But you see, when we put up Mary and we put up all of these saints and we think we can pray to them, no, 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 this is idolatry. And so good question, James, very good thought. Uh, speaking of the UK right now, I'm seeing on our news source here, troops are on the streets in the UK. Army brought in to guard hospitals. Queen Elizabeth has fled her palace. 90 what? What is she? 94, 96 years old. Flees to the, flees to the country. The billionaires in America are fleeing to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Queen Elizabeth is fleeing to the palace. Fear is gripping the hearts of rich and poor, famous and not so famous, and they don't have the word, Joanne. They just don't have the knowledge of the word of God in them. Uh, health workers on the edge of exhaustion. Yeah. That's, that's a sure foundation. When we have the word of God, yeah. meditating on God's word, reading his word, thinking about his word, trying to live according to his word, we know we have a sure foundation that we can trust in and believe. When you pray, make sure that your prayers are mixed with the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. God spoke this whole dimension that we're living in. He spoke it into existence. What was it? That was the Word that came out of God's mouth. The Bible is this written Word inspired by the Holy Spirit spoken through His Word. So there's power in the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us about the blood of Jesus. It tells us there's power in the name of Jesus. It tells us that he gives us angels watch over us to keep us in all of our ways. And when it comes down, do we choose to believe his word? When we choose to believe for yes, it's true, I believe it. It's true for me. I'm applying it to my life. Now we're standing on a sure foundation. <coughs> they have nothing to do. It's our prince of peace. And if he's your prince, you will have peace on the inside of you. You're trusting Jesus with your life. And I've done this time and time again. I trusted Jesus in my life. When I should have been dead so many more times, I, I've lost count how many times Jesus heals me and raises me up again. And yeah. I'm stepping to the spiritual waters, the prayers that I go through, and, and that's just the ministry that God has me in. But he keeps healing me and raising me up, just like he called the fall and kept trying to kill him, and God just kept raising him up. So we can have peace because Jesus is our peace, our trust is in him. We trust him with everything. That's right. We trust him with our very life. And uh, David, uh, David just woke up and walked in. I don't know if at some point that you would like to see the that he's got a powerful testimony. Yeah, I do. I want to say thousands have left Miami, a cruise ship without screens and testings, after a former passenger got the COVID. And so now thousands have left Miami going into the country, going who knows where. And um, uh, 
a Chinese tycoon criticized the president of China in his response to coronavirus. He's gone missing now. The tycoon that criticized the president has gone missing. I, I believe this is an outright war that was intentionally done. But I believe, I believe we're going to be all right. Wouldn't it be something if all the churches that were moving in the power of God now suddenly filled, this would be our opportunity. And it was prophesied. It was prophesied, I would say, 25 years back that I can remember. I believe it was Jerry Seville or, or Gloria Copeland, one of those, prophesied and said that the big malls would, would close the big box stores would close and there, there would be churches would be given big buildings and people would come to them because they couldn't have any medications to be healed and they would come to the power of God. So it, it, this could fulfill something like that. Uh, it was prophesied that churches would run out of chairs and that they would be looking around. All churches would be filled. This could be the beginning of the greatest revival. Let's not look at this in a negative perspective. You know, we can read the news and we can be informed, but at the same time, we mustn't get over into the hysteria of the wicked. We mustn't get over into the hysteria of the world. And um, I'm going to take a break, Joanne, and I'm going to come back. I want to talk to Jim. But if you don't mind his hanging with me for a moment, I'm going to take a break. Don't anybody leave. I've got so much to share with you. I'm on a... I'm on a a marathon today so many of you are watching so many of you have commented we're praying for your prayer request i'd like to take your your prayer need and pray for you so we're on a marathon today on facebook per periscope and youtube we'll edit it up later but we're praying on that national day of prayer that our wonderful president has called for thank god he did thank god he didn't cancel any days of prayer
risen from the dead and he he's my lord my wife went to get milk last night for the house and opened up the door and there's no milk uh safeway safeway said that they're gonna perhaps maybe ration because people are coming in buying five and six gallon milks and um the fear is just out of control in this nation like never before wow all right joanne i'm back and we had to take a little break we were on i don't know how many hours or or how long we were on just just set that over here i'll take care of it when you take another break but joanne go ahead joanne yes hallelujah praise the lord you know i'm glad that I'm glad that we have this National Day of Prayer reinstated. You know, I think that sends a signal to God that the leadership of this country is putting God first. Yeah. That is just a wonderful step for the kingdom of God being manifested in this nation, in this land. I believe that this will continue to go forward. I believe that as God's people join together, like you said, David, this could be a, a great time of revival. Pray, pray God for that. You know, it's that's going to happen at any time. That God's spirit is always available. But praise God that God is going to take something the devil intended for evil, and he will use it for good. And I can he's already good. I've already good come out of this. I've had opportunity to, to, to bring the people that I love closer to Jesus because of everything that's going on. They're, they're, they're saying, where do we turn? Where do we go? And things that I'm going to pray for, to pray for fear. I'm beginning to see those prayer answers. I, I just can't tell you what that does for my heart. You know, when you pray and you believe for over 20 years, and you, you, you've wept before the Lord, you've wept at the feet of Jesus, you've called their name out, and now they're saying, what do you think I should do? This is an opportunity to say, hey, trust Jesus. It's going to be okay. Place your faith in Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't get in fear. But just stay in faith and trust Jesus and believe his word. You're going to be okay. And, and to just to take their attention and to turn it to God, where it's the, the focus hasn't been toward God. They love God, but it hasn't been toward God. You know? And they're coming back. And I, I give God the glory for that. I, it's just, I'm so joyful to see them coming in. You know, the head the headlines here, Trump says, pray, pray. As simple as that, pray. And Americans need to be on their face right now. We need to not be running. We need to be praying. I, I, I really think this phone should be ringing up right now with people that know how to pray. Everybody's been given a way to pray and we've got technology here where we can pray. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing the link. If you're watching on Facebook, share this link. Let others watch. Because I want to be on here. It may be crude how we take breaks, but I'm going to be on here as much as I can through the day to pray. What are we praying for, you know? And um, federal government cuts rates to zero. That's big news. The whole world is going on lockdown. 368 dead in one day in Italy. Just coming in, a leaked document, a document that was leaked, says that the UK crisis to last 12 months with 8 million in the hospital. I told you just a few minutes ago, didn't I, Joanne? That the UK has some big, big problems. They persecuted God's man. They came out against the anointing. They came out against God. Well, frankly, so has the United States of America. Uh -huh. Queen Elizabeth, 94 years old, has fleed the palace for the country. Eight billion in the hospital. My, my, my Lord. Jesus, have mercy. And I said earlier, the Chinese tycoon who criticized Xi, the president of, the, of uh, China, about his response to the coronavirus. Drudge Report says he's gone missing. 
gone missing. Joanna, I'm going to clear the line here, I think, unless there's any, something else on your heart. Jim is there. Is Jim there? Yes, Jim is here. You want to talk? I, I want to hear from Jim, then we're going to open up the phones to some other people. I want to hear what others are saying, and I want to hear others to pray. It's not just one person praying, but it's all, of, you see, church has preconditioned people to let one man do it all, and then we sit back and watch, and that's not the way it should be. And so I want to take some calls today of people that know how to pray. Hello, Brother Jim. Glad to have you with me. What's on your heart today? What's on your mind? I, I haven't had this phone over. Just, oh. Okay, I want to well, call in and pray for America. I'd like to well, call in and pray for America. Is that okay with you, David? Yes. As soon as we can clear the line, we'll put the number up. Have people call in and pray for America. You're right. Let's go to Jim, and Jim is not driving right now. Jim is normally driving, but he's with you there in Lexington. Here we go today, thank goodness. Oh, Jim, I can hear you loud and clear. And I just got up. I just got up. I haven't had a chance to look at all of the news and everything. Uh, so, uh, have, have things uh, changed quite a bit as far as the actual spread of it in the last 24 hours? Yeah, let me just go over it again. We were mentioning earlier, the Fed government has cut rates to zero. The world has gone on lockdown. Italy has buried 368 people in one day. A cruise ship landed in Miami and let off uh, every thousands who left without testing or screening after being on a ship with uh, somebody with the virus. And now, Thousands who possibly could be infected are going, the, going throughout the United States. The Queen of England has fled the palace at 94 years old, going for the country, for the hills. Uh, Georgia has delayed their primaries. And the election they're talking could be postponed. I know that this could rock people's worlds, but it doesn't rock God. It does not got, not God off his throne one bit. God is watching. And... Um, my wife said to me last night, she went in to get milk, and they said people are standing in line for two and three hours that they're out of milk and that they are going to have to maybe possibly call the police. I don't know how good that'll help. We've got a small police department here. But they're going to have to start rationing. They said milk comes in at four in the morning, and as soon as it comes, it's gone. And so there is panic all over the place. The U.K. documents have been... Documents have, yeah, people are banging on the door of the grocery store, my wife says. Let us in, let us in. And two in the morning is what they told us. Two, two to five people are banging, and I'm in the country, brother, and they're banging on the doors of the grocery store. Let us in, let us in, give us milk. Leaked document just hitting the news right now where the United Kingdom crisis to last, they say, 12 months with 8 million suspected to show up in the hospital. Well, that's small concerning the population of the UK, but it's still nothing to make short order of. All restaurants in Ohio and Illinois are closed. I know drive throughs on the West Coast are open, but it's um, really a lot to think through, brother. A lot to think through. The entire Seattle airport has now been used to home the housing of the of the homeless instead of travelers because nobody's going nowhere. So we need to pray. President Trump has called on a national day of prayer, and that's what I'm calling people to do on Facebook, calling them to pray. What are your thoughts, Brother Jim? You're a truck driver. Has this affected your business? I don't know. I haven't gotten a phone call yet. I'll have to make some phone calls to find out. Well, I'm assuming we, we, we will probably be moving up freight. I would say truck drivers will obviously be uh, trying to move move the freight. So if there's a lockdown nationally, we will have to have an exemption. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the question is how many drivers are going to want to you know, uh, get out and drive. I'm going to drive. Uh, the reason I'm going to drive day one. No one knows how everything's gonna, gonna, how it's all gonna go down. But I do know. Uh, well, let me just state also that companies that feed America, 
uh, bracing for labor shortages amid, amid the worry of restocking the stores. So they don't even know how, not only do they know how to, to uh, stock the stores, but they're, they're concerned and they're worried about how they're going to get enough help and laborers to stock the store. I know one thing America springs into action when we go through crisis, but the lines in California outside of Costco are have extended for blocks. Uh, I guess you could say this is a prepper's moment. <laughs> well, Dave, Dave, listen, but people are in fear. The Bible says, the Bible describes one emotion, as far as I know, is more as any, any other, is that fear is generally a spirit. And it's having an, an, an actual field day. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. And so, and so the Bible makes it finally clear, 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 7, I think it is, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. And sound minds realize, as far as I know, 368 gun days, they have, they, they have buried in the, 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 the Italy. I'm willing to bet that they were all very, very sick people, probably to start with. They have... You know, the respiratory, uh, uh, you know, problem. That's generally who it's affecting. You know, people that have severe diabetes generally, you know, because of the respiratory issues, the circulation issues. And so normal younger people, normal healthy people, people that are relatively healthy, well, they will probably be okay. You might get really sick. You might not get really sick. Uh, well, if you go online, you actually hear... Different people have the coronavirus. Some have very, very mild symptoms. You know, a mild cough. You know, they're, they're fine. Others, you know, they have severe symptoms. Yeah, but, that's right. But but even still, Jim, the, the news stated today that the billionaires are fleeing to the small town of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And this is what the Bible says. We read about it in Isaiah chapter 2 earlier. The people are going to flee for the caves and the hills. And this is what fear does. Fear is definitely on the rampage with this. And, um, of course, the hoarding spirit is the poverty spirit. It goes along, all goes along with it. Well, Dave, I'm going to work tomorrow. I'll go to work next week because my faith is in God. We've Amen. We've been doing now for, yes. for over a year and a half now. Time we're going to have people this is not the best time to be learning okay but <laughs> that's right they, they listen we have to go into the basics now people want answers all right they're fearful because there's no truth in the world 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 there's no tru
And so we trust in him, and that light in us, that nature, that spirit dumps out, and it kills sickness in our body. Mm-hmm. We will eventually die, but it doesn't teach, the Bible doesn't teach, we have to die with sickness. We die of old age, not sickness, because Jesus took sickness on himself on the cross, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. And that's what we're basically that Jesus reversed the curse. He took the curse that came. Sickness is of the curse. It's death. And so his life, doesn't it say in uh, John 10, 10, this is the job description. Mm-hmm. Satan and faith Jesus. Mm-hmm. He's come of mine, that devil, for a what? Steal. Steal. For Jesus said, I've come that they may have life. Right. And I have it for abundance. So that's the contrast. That's what we're talking about right now. So, we're going to place our trust, and it doesn't have to be perfect, because we'll be, we'll, 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 because God saves us by grace, through faith. He doesn't save us by faith. He saves us through faith. It's by grace. Grace means God. God extends something to us we don't have. Mm-hmm. Obviously, most of us don't have perfect faith. So, he yeah. comes in. He's going to meet us right where we're at. And we're going to trust him, and and it's going to release the spirit inside, and it's going to bring healing. Yes, and yes. Basically, to find help, you're you're going to walk. In it. That's what I'm going to go to work tomorrow. When everyone's freaking out, I'm going to wash my hands. Obviously, I'm not going to touch doorknobs, and if I do, I'm going to go through my skin and into my body. They simply say it goes into your eyes. You just the mucous membranes, you just simply wash your hands, right? If right, you right. Limb, you're going to stand, but you're going to stand in faith. You're, you're, you're just going to stand in faith. The Spirit, you're going to walk in the Spirit. It's kind of like a bubble. The Spirit's flowing, and, and you're not going to be in fear because it knows. Sickness knows. If it's a demonic sickness, it feeds on fear. That's what energizes it. That's what energizes the kingdom of darkness. It's right, fear. right. So, so you recognize the game. You have to know who the other team is. We're team God. They're team Satan. You have to know what they're going to use. They're going to use fear. They're going to use doubt. They're going to use ultimately unbelief. That's where they want you to go. That's where sickness just ravages you. That's true. Yeah. But if we simply understand fear, we check fear at the door, we're not going to go into doubt. Then from doubt, we're not going to go into unbelief. Okay? And so that we have to recognize when that fear comes, it's only a demon, and you rebuke it. When you rebuke it, you will calm down and you will start to think on it. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, that's, that's where we're at. You don't need to be alarmed. I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Trust me, there's going to be people probably calling him. That's fine. The bottom line is, the spirit of love is not thinking about itself. It is not rushing to the store, taking food away from us. Right, right. And hoarding. That's but, right. But, but no, we're not going to do that. No, we're going to go the opposite way. Because you see, God can fill your cupboard. We knew a family up in Pennsylvania back in the 70s day. The lady will sit here and she'll put her hand on the back of the Bible and say, Our cabinet is filled up with mm. and good. Mm-hmm. She said, We need to close them. Joanne, you remember Carol, but she used to talk about that. I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Why? Not the coming mean, day. We make really good money. I have a bank. I have something there in the bank. I could live off of that for a while. But, but, but I'm going to go to work tomorrow. And I'm, not because I have to, but, but because I want to. Yeah. Father has to, he will need things. We're not going to think of ourselves. Right? Right, right, right. We're going to be a blessing. We're not going to live in fear. That's right. That's what means. People that know healing, people who know health, know that that's what we have to do. Because so many people are panicking. Yeah. We should not panic. Listen, plagues come from throughout the scriptures. We see them days in Egypt. If you want to look at that, there were plagues. Plague came down to the street. We saw that in the Ten Commandments. You know, it came in like a four of the smoke. Remember that? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that the only case of uh, the virus is outside of Danville. And I'm, that's not too far from you, but it's the only case. And and you got thousands of miles between 
where I am here in the Portland, Seattle area, to where you are in Lexington, Kentucky, yeah. where where there's no outbreaks, no spread whatsoever. Uh, we need right. we need to stay in faith, just like you're saying, just like you're saying. Hey, hey, doctor, I was listening to Fox News. It, 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 it was one of those. Uh, he was one of those, uh, I, think, I think it's called an upload, whatever they call it, because it's called today. But um, there was a guy named Dr. Speak Alone, and I think he's like Dr. Eyes. You now he's well known. They were looking at the actual map of where this stuff is basically breaking out. If you notice, it's primarily in cold climate. Mm-hmm. It doesn't appear to be, it doesn't appear to be very, very active in like Africa and South America. There's very little going on there. And so the speculation is, Everything could reach ahead by around April here, and then it could start to go down because of the warmer weather coming in. That's possible. We don't know that for sure. Well, well, that's not what's being reported right now. They're saying that in the UK, in London, in Ireland, uh, there. I know that was the report yesterday, but they're saying now that the crisis is to last until spring of 2021 in the UK, and they could see 8 million hospitalized between now and the spring of next year. So maybe there'll be peaks, and I know that the president talked about getting or flattening the hump, uh, and I think that we're doing that. A lot of people are doing that out of uh, an abundance of caution, but it's true. It's so true. Uh, we got to stay in faith, and we've got to take advantage of this opportunity. God is a miracle God. We believe in healing. We believe in mir- I mean, w- certainly we do, don't we? And this should be the church's finest hour to rise up and to pray. I mean, I don't see any cases in New Orleans, the the murder capital of the United States. I don't see any cases in in Chicago yet, unless uh, John. I'm looking at John Hopkins University's uh, map here. It has not been updated since um, 11:30 this morning. So, I mean. We can blow this out of proportion and get into the world's fear, or we can stay in faith and live our lives, and, and and not only live our lives, but be used of the Lord to pray over people. I mean, I believe when you go back to work, Jim, the Lord's given you a massive harvest field right there to pray over people and, and to teach others, you know, I got the blood covenant over me. I'm not getting sick. To be so bold, right? Uh, that- well, Dave, let me just give an example. Let me just see how the devil works really, 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 really quick. We're going to expose him just a little bit here. But uh, I have been cured 58 years of chronic ear infection. They're gone. Okay, the last two days with all this coronavirus stuff and all the fear in the atmosphere, I had some different new symptoms come in my right ear. Mm. They were very strange and very different. I simply just said, I know who you are. In the name of Jesus, go now in Jesus' name. Yes. Thirty seconds, they were gone. Amen. Now, also, I've been through a year of a twenty-six year chiropractic hip. I, I've had a been chiropractic years. I had a bad hip thing, and it bothered me, and it was gone for twenty-six years. I was uh, healed of that about a year ago, and just this morning, I was there. I rolled over, and there it was. Started again. Tried to start again. I said, No, no, I know who you are. Go, Jesus name, and within a few minutes it was gone again. In fact, just working fine. This is what we're talking about. Well, what we're talking about is when you know, when you know, when you get victory in certain areas, you have a certain amount of boldness. There's just a boldness with you. That's right. In certain areas. Like with me, when it comes to vision, when it just just like I, I, I was like telling you, we know that uh, well, I'm not wearing glasses. I was uh, wearing 3.25 readers. I've worn readers for 22 years. And and about a year ago, I just blinked my eyes. I looked right at the glasses and down, didn't even know it. Picked up the iPhone and I was reading small print again. Had done that here. Beautiful. Wow. Right, 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 right. right. And, and, and so I had confidence. All right. And I'm becoming more and more confident. So uh, I had chronic bronchitis. Like ten years, so, I mean, I mean, I mean, this would come on me. And I, I would say chronic; it, it was not daily, but every year I used to get it. And so now, uh, uh, of course, I was taking that uh, coil silver that took care of it. That's being criticized on the news now because people are selling all of these coil silver products, and things like uh, that. But, um, but, uh, but, but I did take that seven years ago, and it basically stopped that that condition. But 
Uh, you know, I do think that God gave us some natural sense and some thinking. And I think that there are some things that people can take and should take. Uh, for example, vitamin C in the powdered, crystallized form. Uh, get some, get some uh, what do you call that, uh, cranberry juice or grape juice and mix it up and put it down. And that vitamin C is amazing. These are things God gave us that are resources that he created that can be used. I'm not saying anything's a, a cure-all, but I'm saying that there's some things we can do, gargling with salt water, things like that, that are that are good thinking. It's good thinking. They can help you too. Dave, it's back on my actual eyes. Uh, in 2017, I was downgraded. Uh, I used to have very good long, uh, long, I used to look at the eye chart, and I used to go down there near the bottom. And I could, I could, I could read it. That was 2020. They, they downgraded me. But in 2019, I took it again after the miracle, and they put me back up to 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Well, that's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. On a DOT. That's a DOT physical. And she says right there, she says, cover this eye, cover that eye, and you can read it backwards. It's not ready back. If you're 2020, wow, you would prove it. That's awesome. That doesn't happen. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. This Unless you're walking with the Lord, it happens. Well, Dave, listen. Listen. God did not bring this sickness. I know there's a teaching that they get God behind everything. No, it's not. God allowed free will. Satan uh, is still called the God of this world, but, but he has no power over the believer. The believer has power over him. And as long as the believer listens to his lies, that's right. Real lies. Now, 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 now it's true. Demon possessed people have supernatural power. That's true because they, because Satan's spirit looks for a body to work in. So if a person turns themselves over, sure that can happen. But the difference is with the honey. Okay, so you're kind of right. But, but here's the thing: the believer, God sets limits on Satan. And he can't come against us unless we yield territory. And if you will not yield territory, like Brother Hayes said, if you get in some kind of a thinking match, we'll, 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 we'll the thinking, reasoning match, he'll whip you every time. But if you get him on faith, take him off captive, he'll whip him every time. And that's what it comes down to. So don't let him in. As soon as any negative thought, any fear, and, and listen, there's going to be some good reason too. Right. I bet on the floor. Right, right. You're starting to get that symbol. You just right there recognize that's how they start. They work in the first person. You'll think it's your thought, it's not. Whether it's your thought or his, it doesn't matter. Quickly, take your thought right in. And maybe you've been listening to it the last 24 hours. Okay. Doesn't matter. Take the thought captive now and watch it leave. Right in front of you of his righteousness. When you get saved, you make the exchange. 
You give him your badges, all of your own rights, and then he gives you his rights. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? So now, you have his rights, and all those you, you still stub your toe and cut and hop corn and traffic and they went, all right, that stands covered. Past, present, future, the issues are actually not covered, taken away. All right, it's the same way with divine healing. He has a basket of health. That's his body. He, he took everything on him. You've got a bad sick. All right, all right. That's your sick. In salvation, you exchange those bad kids' health as well. So you now have his health. You have his body. Jesus was never sick. Right. Never. So, never. So he was, you're in. Now think about it. You're in Christ. So if you're in Christ, he's in you. So everything, your joint heirs, right? So if you're joint heirs, uh, you have everything Jesus has. He has everything you have. That's right. That's Amen. Not a good, that's not a good deal for Jesus, really. But he's going to have to handle it. He took everything you've got bad. You've got everything good. He's got your joint heirs. So all you do is rest in that, and you will want this divine health, this divine energy. Yes. Amen. And, and, and that's the soul that God wants us to walk in. That's the soul that I'm going to be walking in tomorrow. When I go to work now, you, now you take the bread, and as soon as you bite into that, you bite into that bread by faith. That's how that's how the first portion of the, the, the Christians were healed. Maybe were healed right there. Yeah. Right at that point, they took communion every time they assembled, and I think the reason why was for healing. For healing. That's right. Recognizing Jesus' work. You see. The church understands the cup. They understand the blood of Jesus. But what the church doesn't understand is the body of Jesus. Right. That's confusing. They don't understand why are we taking this bread. The bread represents Jesus' broken body. It's broken for your diseases and your sicknesses and your infirmities, your crippling effects, blindness, sight disease, heart disease, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever. That's what the body was broken for. That's why he punished him the whipping. Never could understand why did Jesus take the 39. Well, it's also it's for the forgiveness of sins, and it's also for the healing. Both of those are covered under the broken body, no bones, just broken body, and the blood of Jesus. Both of it's covered. It's covered. That's why I've said for many years we don't pray that we don't commission angels to go forth and lay hold of our healing because Jesus already got it for us. Right, Dave. One of the biggest misunderstandings is, is reading Old Covenant verses for the believer right. today. And in the gospel, uh, Jesus said in John 15, I'm the I, he is the vine, you know, we're the branches. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Can actually do, you know, that, that's true. But the point is, in Christ, just a year or two later, we're never alone. Right. We're apart from him. He's in us now. So he, he was speaking the old covenant. He wasn't speaking the new covenant. Yeah. He was speaking to those folks. We can learn from it. But we're never alone. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Doesn't it say in the time where David says, take not thine Holy Spirit away from me. We don't. We don't worry about that, will the day. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling. Right, Not right. on our shoulders. That's right. We have you with us. That's why I say he doesn't hit you. He's a, he's abiding with you. Jim, I'm going to take a break here, and um, I'm going to open up the lines for some more callers. We're going to break at the top of the hour, and then we're going to come back at 6 tonight Pacific time. That's about 8 o'clock your time. And I think what I'll do is we'll prepare people to get the communion elements together. If it's a little juice, it doesn't have to be grape juice. It could be a little cracker or bread, and and let's do that tonight. Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave, there have been people that, that talk about healing. I was listening to a guy say this made that a woman had a, uh, I'll have to tell you about the lady healed here in town that had a 40-some year goiter in her throat. Uh, but this is a story of communion that took place a number of years ago. A woman had a growth in her neck. You could see it. As she took communion, believing that Jesus' body took her sicknesses, Jesus appeared in a vision, reached out, grabbed the tumor, and it exploded directly in front of it, and it left right there. 
Praise God. Praise God. Yes, I've seen that before, Jim. All right, let's believe for it tonight. And you plan there in Lexington, Kentucky to take communion with us tonight, 8 o'clock your time, 6 o'clock Pacific time. I think that's the right difference. All right. And uh, let's... Probably let's... three hours behind you. Yeah, we're, we're going to be three hours behind you. So let, we'll make that announcement. We'll put it out on Facebook. And those that are watching right now, those that are listening right now, get yourself in a position. We'll take communion together. And I think that'd be a great idea. And uh, I want to open up the lines and take some more calls just in the next 10 minutes here before we take uh, a break. We've been on for quite a while here. Uh, but I want to take a break and I want to take some more lines. Jim and Joanne from Lexington, I love them dearly. Partners of our ministry, believing in what the Lord is doing through us with them. That's their powerful ministry as they covenant partner with us. We'll give the number again, 1-888-701-4483. If you tried to get through and you couldn't get through before, now would be a good time to call. And uh, I want to hear what, what's on your mind. I'd like to hear you pray and uh, have you do some praying with us. This is a national day of prayer. We have a beautiful opportunity here. I'm with you now for, what is it, two hours, I think it is. Um, I used to do this every single night in the middle of the night, three and four hours. And I was just uh, marveling um, at some of these songs that I'm playing in the background. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Oh, my. While Jim was talking, I just, I just, I literally come up out of this chair. I shall not be moved. And that needs to be every one of our prayers. We are not going to be moved. No matter what the news media says, no matter what the hysteria is, no matter what the facts may be, the truth is God is still on the throne. And that needs to be shouted to the housetops. All right, so make your call, and it's extension 802 puts you right here to the secret place, to our little studio secret place. 802 is the extension that you want to dial. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm so glad we are exempt. Did you know we're exempt when we're covered by the blood? I'm exempt. You should be exempt. 888-701-4483. Four four eight three. Excuse me, I said the wrong number. Four four eight three is the end of it. Let's try this again. Eight 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 seven zero one four four eight three extension eight zero two. Call me today, or I'm going to take a break here, and then we'll come back at six p.m. Pacific and do some more praying and shouting and giving God the praise. changes are happening this is the time for your prodigals to come home and i mentioned that in 2019 what a time for your relatives for your family to come home even though the world fall apart there's victory in jesus and you ought to be just singing that through the day i heard an old old story how a savior came from glory you remember? Now, some of you go to churches that still sing those songs. Some of you have never heard that song. It's a brand new one to you because your church doesn't sing it. Then repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever, He's 
taught me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me and i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood gotta get on the blood of Jesus and let the blood of Jesus get on you and rebuke fear father in Jesus name I come against fear right now I come against fear against the minds of those in America and around the world God you're a big God and none of this bad news has moved you it's not rocked you off your throne you are not moved in any sense of the word you told us this would happen. Oh God, I pray every earthquake, earth be silent. No earthquakes on top of this pandemic. In Jesus' name. No natural disasters on top of this pandemic. I command this earth. Earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. We stand in the gap and pray over this nation. No natural disasters in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood, plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I'm gonna take a break. I'm not gonna be gone too far, but we'll come back on in about three hours and we'll take communion with y'all. Walk it through. All you need to do is Get a little piece of bread. If you don't have a cracker, get a piece of bread. Get a cup of something, preferably grape juice if you have it. If you don't, it could be orange juice. It could be water. Whatever you have. And I'll walk you through communion, holy communion, and we'll pray not only for the forgiveness of sins, but cover you in the blood of Jesus. I'll take a break, and I'll be back in three hours. Leave me your comments. I want to hear what you have to say.